Okay, I've just got a, a, a couple of um, comments as we wrap up uh, for the day. First, uh, I, I want to thank all of our uh, panelists and, and moderators, uh, presenters. Uh, and Bridget, thank you for filling in uh, on two uh, today uh, that uh, did a wonderful job. I think you recognize that a, a broad range of material was presented that really demonstrates not only the breadth but the creativity of people that are working to meet these challenges, and these are uh, very significant challenges. Um, one takeaway I, I would offer is that there really has been a convergence over the last 15 years um, of work that actually is effective. And so there are commonalities of all of the studies that have had impact. There are, really are five identifiable co uh, commonalities of those studies. And, and actually, Mike, your slide had um, had all of them in there, but one that that we uh, include as well uh, in terms of those commonalities. And, and the one that was not included um, was what we call compliance facilitation. But it's probably a part of everything you do. But we do compliance facilitation very directly. Uh, so we look at every time we ask a patient to do something, we have them rate the probability they're going to do it on a scale of 1 to 10. Uh, and then when they say it's a 1, there's no way in the world I'm going to do what you just asked me, we do a simple thing. We say, why? And then they tell us exactly why they can't do that element of treatment. And we've learned over time that that really helps facilitate compliance. The other thing we do is we explain why it's important. We go back to the model and explain why this is a critical element uh, of treatment and, and what role it serves in treatment. But those five elements, uh, the four that you had in the slide and then the compliance facilitation, are a part of every effective treatment. You can go back and look at that. Uh, they're a part of every piece of that. The other thing I would note is they're very simple. They're really straightforward. The things that work in this field are really simple things. They are delivered very differently by different orientations and by different collection uh, of theories, but they are are really very simple things um, that are effective uh, in this area. Uh, the, the only modification I would encourage you when you hear safety planning, uh, the only thing I would add that we recognized in studying safety planning very closely, you have to train people how to ask for help. You can't assume that somebody knows how to ask for help. You have to role play it. You have to walk through scenarios. And you have to help them understand the language of asking for help. And the last comment I think really highlighted this. One of the difficulties people have is this is a shame-based problem. Um, and I do believe that shame is one of the biggest barriers. And it's one of the biggest barriers to compliance. And so we talk about shame as a challenge. Just like transportation, getting to therapy, Shame is a problem, and so we make sure we push that issue and elevate it and address it with every single uh, individual uh, that we work with. Um, and the last thing um, I would encourage you to do is to, to recognize the creativity and the application of these in remarkably challenging settings. Um, that kind of creativity will help solve this problem. When you look at um, how do we deliver this, how do we integrate this into systems, I think that's a part of the discussion for tomorrow. That's, it's going to be a participatory morning. Um, so how do we integrate this in a meaningful way? And, and one of the things that, that I've thought consistently about, and I think the zero suicide effort brings this up, what's more effective, to do it within a zero suicide effort or to do it within an integrated wellness effort, where this is just one more component of what we do to be healthy? Um, and does that help with some of the stigma, some of the shame, and some of the difficulty that we have with this area? So I look forward to tomorrow. Thank you for your participation. Uh, tomorrow morning should be fun with, with a lot of input um, and a lot of discussion. Bridget, anything you want to add? Okay. We'll see you at 8.30 tomorrow. Thanks.